me, Lady Ada, the engineer, broadcasting you from my desk, where we're going to be doing some more uh, fun electronics tonight. Tonight we're actually going to do the most fun part of electronics, which is documentation. Ooh, documentation. Everyone loves that. Um, that's what makes uh, Adafruit awesome, is we always document things really well. And we have a tutorial ready to go for a product uh, during release. And so I'm going to work on a tutorial for an unreleased product um, and kind of show you how I use the learning system. It's also a really great way to test our new HDMI input converter that we purchased today from B&H Photo Video, which is not a sponsor, but uh, we'd be open to that if they were interested. No, we pay them. We pay them right now. Yeah. Uh, so we have the, the new Blackmagic uh, importer. We're going to try to yeah. uh, get my screen on that screen. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Ooh, okay. So that's the main screen. So do you want to put me put me in there? And then you want to, do you want to also have the, uh, the overhead, or do you want to switch between the overhead and me as necessary? Um, I'm not going to use the overhead that much, but it's... You need the overhead. I'm just going to switch like this. Okay. And then we'll go back and forth. Cool. Because it's, yeah. All right, so let's go to the overhead, and I'll um, I'll chat about this. That's cool. Eventually, we can make like a clicker, and I'll just I'll just select. I am the clicker. You're the clicker. Um, so this is the uh, new board. I'm gonna do the auto focus lock on that. Go 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 go. You can do it. Um, this is uh, the new um, feather board. We've we've come out with. Um, let me see. This is the previous one we made. We made. Um, and I'm going to go 32-4 feather, and now we're making an ESP-826 feather, um, which is, it's, it's basically like, you know, the same size and shape and almost identical pinout, but instead of having an Atmega 32-4 U4 and a prototyping area, it has a USB serial converter, um, some reset circuitry, and then um, our ESP-12E module, which is a really nice FCCC certified ESP-826 module, which has four megabytes of flash built in, the crystal, um, and a little blue LED on pin two, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this board is done. And it's actually the first prototype we made off of the panel. It's just a handmade one to verify that the, you know, the panel came out good. Um, we're going to be picking and placing this uh, probably on Monday, um, which means it's about time for me to start on the documentation. It usually takes me about um, four to six hours to fully write a tutorial, it depends. Um, sometimes they're a little bit faster, sometimes they take a little bit longer. Um, with this one, I don't think it's going to be as bad because um, this isn't that much different than the Huzzah ESP8266 breakout that we have in the store. So I can leverage a lot of the um, stuff that I've written for that, like demonstration code and stuff, and I only have to kind of talk about um, more the hardware. Like I don't have to explain how to install um, ESP8266 code for Arduino because like that's pretty much done. I don't have to take uh, photos of the serial console because it's not going to be any different. So anyway, just explaining what I do and why I do it. So that's that's the end of the overhead time. And this is um, the learning system. So this is what people see when they go to learn, but what they don't usually see is um, admin. That's me. Um, I'm an admin. And... Um, I get to click on this button <laughs> and this is the back end. So this is where you see all of the control stuff where we can turn on and off guides and, and whether they're draft or published. But I'm going to create a new guide and I'm going to call this the Adafruit uh, ESP, sorry, Adafruit Feather ESP8266, I'm sorry, it's the Adafruit Feather Huzzah 8266. Um, and then this is, I'm going to come up with like a short line, and this is um, Wi-Fi with built in battery charging for IoT on the go. And then this part actually usually right last. And then um, for the image, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the Dropbox. Ooh, which product is it? Hold on. I have to figure out the... Oh, 
no, I need, I'm gonna need a code <laughs> to log in. Okay. Change my password. Okay, actually, I'll, I'll figure that out later. Um, I'll add the photo later. I have to go into my. No, no, because I I changed my my password, so I have to I have to update that. I don't want to do that live on on TV. That's a bad idea. Um, so I'm gonna pick a category. And Adafruit IO. Well, not really Adafruit IO. It's more like I'm not gonna put under Adafruit products for now. Okay, so this is the um, main page that you start with and you kind of have to create new pages and stuff. So I'm actually going to start with the downloads page. And the downloads page is usually where I put the um, schematics and um, board layout stuff. So... Over here I have the schematic. I just want to do a little bit of cleanup because, for example, these mounting holes kind of got in the way here. Okay. So I can um, export an image and put it on the desktop of the Feather ESP schematic and then for the board layout <clears throat> can do the same except I add measurements because people seem to really like the measurements so I turn on measures and you know, the inches and then I I just put in, you know, the kind of the most common measurements, like, you know, size between holes and width and diameters and stuff. Once I'm happy with the dimensions, I export. This is an image too at 300 dpi. And then I save that as a board file. And then I go back here and I can import. So this 
schematic in. Take a second. Has to process the images. Hopefully it didn't crash. Okay. And then I'll put in some text above that says um, schematic. Look to enlarge, because people are always like, why is this schematic so small and fuzzy? And I'm like, you click on it. And then this is called fabrication print. Dimensions and images. And then I can upload the board file. Do a little bobby dance. Okay. Um, once I have the schematics and board layout, I can actually um, do the data sheets section. And this is where I will look up the data sheets. So, for example, we use the CP104. So, I'm going to save this. I'm actually going to make a new folder for all this stuff. Get that data sheet, and then if I go to learn, I think I also have some data sheets here. So for example, like I can grab all of this and stick it in here. And then I will grab this, put that, whoa, format this as non-header, okay, so I got the regulator, okay. actually, I'm going to put this in its own, each little thing can have a, its own section, I kind of like to have each paragraph in its own thing, so that's the data sheet, and then I want to have the CP2104 USB to serial converter and this is where Any other parts on here that I think require a data sheet? So I think that's good. So you got data sheets, got more info with the ESP, and I got the specification report and the module report and all that stuff, schematic, fabrication print. So my thing is when I'm done with a page, I click publish page. And that way I know that that page is done. Okay, so the next page is, I'm actually gonna go to here. Um, I'm going to grab some of these FAC elements because they're going to be similar. So I'm going to make a new page called FAC and I'm going to make a new FAC question and I'm going to borrow like this question from here. And then gonna grab this question too. And then I'm gonna add another thing, which I know is gonna come up is, um, you can't seem to find the um, serial port on my computer for the feather huzzah. And I'm going to, because this is like such a common thing. Um, I 
And then I'm actually going to link directly to this page. That way they'll get the most recent drivers. Okay, so that's pretty good. I got a fact page. Hmm. I'm gonna skip this page. Okay. So I'm also going to kind of borrow this because other than the beginning, it's very much the same. And luckily, we can do pretty much everything except images with copy. And we'll make a copy of that page except for the images, which we'll have to grab and reinsert, but that's fine. Better than, better than having to rewrite all the text. That's the only thing we haven't quite figured out. So... Okay, I'll have to shoot images later for this. Like, I'll have an image of it plugged in. Okay, so for example, I have to rewrite this. Because there's no breakout, it's the feather. Okay. Um, it has serial converter, so I'll just say, um, in order to upload the code of these P's, you're going to um, connect any data capable micro USB cable to the feather zone and the other side to your um, computer's USB port. And then we'll need that CP2104 driver link. Install the required CP2104 USB driver to have the com, port, com slash serial port appear properly. I'm going to Okay, and then here instead of this, I'm going to say Okay. You're wondering, like, why do I have to have three warnings about selling the USB driver? Because I know. I know that you have to do it three times. Okay, so then I can delete this because it's not useful. We don't need that. Delete this. Delete. Okay. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gank these images, which are actually from Todd Trees. And I'm just going to grab them, and then I will just reinstall them onto the other tutorial. Oh, actually we don't need to do this anymore. Oh, this is really old. So this is no longer true. When you select, let me see how it, what happens when you do this. I think the latest board manager doesn't 
Oh, you can set the frequency. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. We should probably just have them set the frequency. Okay, so... Meanwhile, I can start inserting these. drag and drop the images. So I'm gonna put them in my order. Okay. This one goes here. Okay. So this is got this one, got this one. I kinda wanna take another screenshot like that. Uh, I guess I kinda should just put it on the list. image and then this image okay. so image uploading it's so much fun do 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 how's stuff going over there okay Documentation is mostly just image uploading. Okay, got that one done. Let's see, I got baud rate, I got 115, okay. Cool, I think I got pretty much everything. Then there's this thing, and then there was a bug in ID 165, which means you have to have function prototypes, but it's actually not relevant here. So, okay, skip that. this image. Grab this image. Okay, almost done. Just two more pictures. To load in. I like to reuse screenshots because I hate taking screenshots. Okay, so that's that's it. So basically, just cloned this tutorial and just took out these images, but that's cool. Okay. <clears throat> All right, 
this page is done. So I'm going to add images to this later. So I'm going to leave this as a draft. And I'm going to reorganize this page. I'm going to put this in both there. And put this down here. OK. So I did fact downloads. I'm going to skip other options. Let's look at node MC Lua. This is actually like, oh, this is also nearly the same. It does have a couple of images. It has a table. But I'm okay with that. There's not that many images. So I'm going to also, I'm also going to copy this page. Okay, so <clears throat> just change a little copy. And then I'm going to go to oh, save this, go here, grab this text, go back here. Okay, go back here, grab this warning. This element, delete this element. Okay. Come get into a little bit of parsing issue. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to. This is a 7400 or something. 7400. Okay. It's a detail. time just to read over, see if there's any differences. This is the Lua documentation for the ESP8266. So I thought originally that I actually made a mistake on the board, but it actually turns out the documentation for the Lua is So four and five are swapped in the documentation. That's what it is. Okay, so this table didn't make it either. So let me see if I can. More tables.
Tables are the one thing that's kind of hard to do in like a GUI method. Pin notes. PCB Arduino. I don't use a lot of tables. There's not that many pins. there. my table. Like the rest is code, so I'm just gonna have to review it. It's zero. Assembly we don't need because this one doesn't have power stuff. Okay, so this is the fun part. Um, oh, you know what? This is. I know this is. Okay. So now is my time to do the pinouts, which is actually kind of the most fun. So pinouts is where I kind of I put a lot of the details. I'm also going to have a power management page because with the battery stuff, it's good to have a page just about how to do power management. Okay. Can you um, flip to the overhead? Okay. So here we are. So yeah, there is um, 
battery charging built in to here. There's a row of pins and a row of pins. Now to make it as compatible as possible, I made the pins in certain locations and some of them are duplicated. So I have to like figure out how to basically explain that because for like an Atmega 32U4, there's like 20 GPIO pins. So it's like you can have like pins one, two, three, four, five, analog one, like clock. I mean, like there's no duplication because all the pins are the same. The ESP8266 only has like six pins. So, and also like the SPI pins and the, S the SPI pins and the I2C pins and the power pins are always in the same location. So there's default pins for the Arduino IDE. So like those are the ones are, that are in a default location, um, but the rest aren't. So I'm going to, Quickly. Oh, I don't have photos for this yet. Okay. So what I'm going to do is until I get, I've just remembered it because in picking place, we don't have the photos of it. So I'll just sketch out the rough guide of what the pins are and get that documented. But it, it's 10 o'clock. So I thought maybe we would maybe continue some other time. Yeah. Okay. That's it, folks. You'll see more documentation on another future episode. All right, that's it from Justin Lady Anna. See you soon.